You know, I just, I love this shirt. I do. I mean, uh, it, this shirt Three weeks in a row. No matter whether I'm in the Alabama Hills or in Hawaii, the shirt just works with my back. You wore that to Italy, didn't you? I think I saw a shot. Catherine I brought posted. three shirts to Italy. That's it for eight, five weeks. <laughs> One pair of pants. And then, I, did I ever tell you the story of Dan and I were in the... Uh, we're in a, a, a little laundromat in Oregon one time and we were going to do three weeks of, so we did a Palouse and then we did two Oregon trips. I had to fly home in between to do a trade show. And so Dan stay, he didn't want to drive all the way back to California. So he stayed, well, we all had to do laundry. Both of us had to do laundry. So we're in this little laundromat and his little tidy whities come out of the dryer, his underwear, and he starts folding them. And there's this young family sitting near us, and they've got a little kid with them. And Dan goes, June. <laughs> and he folds the next pair and says, July. <laughs> and you can see these people looking at each other like, is this guy for real? <laughs> and then we finally let him in on it. But, you know, if you uh, turn him inside out, you just use them another couple of days. <laughs> That's what Dan would say. <laughs> oh, those are fun yeah. times. I miss my buddy Dan. So uh, what were we going to talk about? Shoot. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, so um, I know. So what drew you to photography, Cole? Is that what we were going to talk about? Yeah. What drew you to be a photographer, to even to, to photography in general? What was the thing that said, hey, or caused you to say, I want to be a photographer? Well, I, I uh, had stumbled across an old home once owned by George Eastman, and that caused me to read his biography. And I just fell in love with the technology of photography, reading his biography, all of the little inventions he had made to improve it, to improve it, to improve it. And so that's really was the spark that got me going. Wow. So and literally you. So wait a minute. Go back up for a second. I, I've heard the story. But I guess I didn't realize the depth of it. So you hadn't been a photographer, but somehow you found a book about. No, I was 14 no, years old. I'm 14 years old living in Rochester, New York. I'm just out hiking. No and way. I come across an old ruin of a home and the friend says, hey, that was once owned by George Eastman. And you probably said, who's George Eastman? No, I knew. Oh, you knew. OK. I knew Kodak. I mean, Kodak ruled back then when I lived there. And Polaroid. And yeah. then I read his book and then uh, just fell in love with photography, the process. And, and it fit me because I didn't think myself a creative person. And so I thought this was the perfect artistic medium for me. It required less creativity and more technical skills. Yeah. So I became very, very proficient in a very short period of time. And uh, of course, now that seems foolish to think that... <laughs> compensate for cre lacking uh, in creativity by excelling in technical but yeah that was my story how about how yours about that? well mine was my dad who served 10 years in the military in the air force he was in world war ii and korea the korean conflict and one of his responsibilities he flew on b-25s in the same squadron that joseph heller flew in which of a catch-22 fame the book and uh I, he had he was in the plastics business and so he had these big plastic barrels in the basement where things were stored and of course i'm a kid you know a young kid and i'm like what the heck is in those barrels you know and so i pop the band off the top and go rifling through the barrels that i'm sure he probably didn't want me to be doing but i found all of these two and a quarter by two and a quarter negatives and i i wondered what they were because they looked backwards you know i didn't understand what they were and so my dad brought him out and then he brought out all the prints that he had made. So on leave, he would do some a photography of his own on the plane. He would be pho photographing the bomb runs. And that was part of his responsibility as far as a waste gunner. And he was a radio navigator as well. But, um, you know, so I just became kind of fascinated and and wanted to to develop one of those. And so he ended up building a darkroom. And the, re the way that happened is... At the, I worked at the local town dump. I could ride my bicycle to that dump and tell people where to park to, to throw their garbage away. Well, a guy comes in one day and he's got all these uh, trays and these canisters and this larger thing. I, I thought I knew what it was. And I sure enough, I put it all to the side and had my dad come down with the car because I wasn't old enough. I didn't drive yet. And he said, son, this is all darkroom stuff. 
including wow. an enlarger, no less. Wow. And so I put it aside and my dad said, I guess I have to build you a dark room. <laughs> so he built me a dark room and I started developing. And so I did it. You know, my introduction to photography was really the cool factor. Honestly, it was like, cool. This is so, and it is cool, man. When you f developed, you know, negatives and you saw them come and then you the, did the print and you saw the print develop and then you dumped it in the fix. I mean, that was it was like magic, voodoo magic. It was so much fun and so cool. I had zero interest in the creative part of photography at that point. It was all about just very cool thing to be able to do and show your friends, look at me, I'm a photographer. Then my mother bought me Ansel Adams' print and negative book. And those are pivotal, right? That changed everything. Like, oh, this is what I could actually create with a camera? That's cool. And then I eventually saved up some money and bought a Mamiya C330, two and a quarter twins. Lens. I had to have two and a quarter because that's what my dad had. And that started me on the path of being much more serious about my photography. And then it wasn't until much later that my wife in like the 80s, well, no, it would have been in the 90s, I guess, 90s. She finally said, hey, you're you're kind of a curmudgeon and you need some some creativity in your life. You should go take some photography workshops really that's when i met tony sweet and nancy rotenberg and then i got very serious about my photography but it was my dad's photography in the war and seeing it that caused me to be kind of interested you still have his negatives uh a few not not many huh. yeah unfortunately i think that's a lot amazing. of that one when, when yeah. you know he's been gone for over 30 years we lost him young you know, it's interesting. I'm, I'll be 66 in a month, and he, we lost him at 68. And I thought he was 66. Okay. Yeah, I, you I'm look much older. Much older. Than you are. You look much older. Yeah. <laughs> You're the um, first who has said that. Uh, yeah, I had a dark room at an early age, and I just would just spend my whole life in the dark room. It was just wonderful, wonderful times. I think the thing, and I, I think a topic I had suggested about the connection of music to photography, and I remember just memorizing AM radio songs, hit songs, because you were in there day and night. And those those songs are burned in my memory. When I hear one now, it takes me back to a darkroom moment. Right to the smell of the fixer, mm -hmm. the smell. I mean, and the, the frustration of winding that darn film inside the, the dark bag. <laughs> those are great memories. The kids nowadays great listening memory. to this are like, what are they talking yeah. about? And, you know, some people think you've got to have those darkroom experiences. Oh, I just saw a person, a ghost appear. Well, I have to go get the girl. Does mom have your car? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that ruined that whole thing. Oh, we could just, you know what? We just keep going. Just leave it. That's the reality. You guys thought I was really in the Alabama hills, but that was that was my daughter Jennifer. You saw bits and pieces of her break up in there, in all that stuff. But uh, she magic was magic. Awesome. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, you were finishing uh, up a thought. Some people thinking that you need to have those darkroom experiences to be a real photographer, and I, you know, they were wonderful experiences, but they're memories, they're great memories, but they're not necessary to be a photographer. Yep, I agree. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a fun disruption. We'll see if any, you know what, this will be a true test to see if people if listen even long watch. enough, yes. you know, and to make a comment. So those who have yes. watched long enough, make a comment about how, how incredible now, that now is. John yeah. mentioned his daughter's name. You can't rewind it. Anyone oh, who yeah. remembers what the name was posted in the comments. Yeah. Without we'll rewinding. Well, yeah, we got 517 viewers. We'll get about three comments. Uh, yeah, that's right. If, all right, okay. we'll see you soon. See you next week. All right, bye-bye.